Happy Saturday, everybody. Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com coming at you with 2019 Panini Luminance Football. Are you ready for some football? 12 box, pick your team. Number four from JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. Big thanks to all of these folks right here who got their teams straight up. We got some teams locked away in some team randoms. There's the 23 spot team random where uh, the top four will get these teams. So we randomize the 23 spots. Top four get Cardinals, Redskins, Broncos, Giants. And the rest of you will get one spot in a one-pack break of um, Gold Rush 8x10. It looks like first name, first letters. First name, first letters. So just it's a slight change from what we normally do. Let's see if that was actually intentional. <laughs> All right, so anyhow, it'll be in one of those one-pack breaks. All right. So there is the list of 23 right here. Good luck, everyone. Let's randomize that list three times. Two and a one. One, two, and three. After three times, we got Kevin O. Down to Roy. So that's for the 23 spot rando. So congrats to Kevin. You get the Arizona Football Cardinals in Pick Your Team 4. We'll put a little symbol next to your name so you know you got that in a team random. Arturo with the Redskins in Pick Your Team 4. Stephen K, you got a team. You got the Broncos. Oppo Joe Mojo in Pick Your Team 4. And Patrick K with the Giants in Pick Your Team 4. All right, and everyone else right here, Appreciate you giving it a shot. You will be entered into, we'll kind of gray your names right here. We'll, we'll, we'll enter you into the uh, one pack. I think it's going to be first letter of their last name, which is the way we've been doing it, and that's how the letters are, but I'm just I'm going to confirm with Nick. If he does not respond to my message, then I'm just going to do it the way we have been doing it, not the way it looks on your screen right now. So just FYI. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Um, okay, so now there's another set of teams still remaining. And that was in the 4199 team random. That we sold 14 spots, and every spot, every one of those 14 spots gets a team. I think the lowest valued team was 2999, and then some teams are obviously more than 4199. So good luck to, actually, spots left zero, right? Yeah, thank you. Good luck to, and thank you to all of these folks right here. I know the team randoms can be a little cumbersome, but I think it's a kind of a good way to get, it, get, get a big team for a fraction of the price, so it works out. Three and a six, nine times on this list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. All right, three and a six, nine times, nine times. Perfect. John, John Gotti, down to Brian O. So that's on this different tab right here. Bam. So, John, congrats. You got the Chiefs in Pick Your Team 4. Brian O with the Ravens in Pick Your Team 4. Johnny, you got the Seahawks in this break. Brian O with the Bears. Stephen Wilkerson, Panthers. Corey Car Carpenter, last spot mojo, Colts. Ryan Redman with the Eagles. Kevin O with the Titans. Brian O with the Bengals. Brian O also has the Dolphins. 
You can offer Brian a trade. These random teams, you can offer a trade. Dolphins for Brian. Nick with the Packers. Colton with the Chargers. Matthew Simons, Vikings. And Brian O with the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo. I mean, does that move the needle for you, Brian, at all? Um, I can try to check. Bears would be forty nine ninety nine. And Panthers would be forty nine ninety nine. They're they're the same price. So the Panthers are fifty bucks, and the Bears are fifty bucks in these luminance breaks. If you were to buy these straight up, so. So take that for what it's worth. No, Brian says no. Ooh, man, he's attached a tax to it too. All right, he's gonna stick with the Bears. All right, sounds good. We we'll give it a shot. Trade window closed. Let's print and rip. All right, good luck, everybody. There's the fresh case of luminance right here. We have another pick your team in the store. Now this, this break should bring us to a little bit past the top of the hour. So that brings us actually into the last hour of the broadcast. So if you want to do another one of these, we probably have to sell it out straight up and ASAP. So we have time to fill it and break it. All right, so there's four, eight, and 12. All right, here's the official printout. Either way, this break will take us into the uh, the last hour of our broadcast. Now, we're back tomorrow. We break seven nights a week again. So that that is back in play. Um, so whatever doesn't fill tonight, we can do tomorrow. But if you still have the itch tonight, because let's say you can't break tomorrow. you got things to do. Um, I don't know. Well, let, let's try the – well, I'm doing – I'm going to do that one-pack break. Don't let me forget about that 8 by 10 break. Um, yeah, we can try another uh, Luminance. We might be, we're going to be too late for Leather and Lumber, I'm afraid. What about Upper Deck Supreme Hard Court? That's on the site. What about hockey fans? We've got some ingrained hockey. We can do another one box break. That's pretty quick and fun. Um, Game of Thrones fans, we've got personal boxes and we've got a random card break down to 10. And we've got a few personal box options. Maybe we can close out the night with some personal box. I love those mini helmets. We can end the night with some Who Am I? So, up to you. If not, you know, we'll, just, we'll play it by ear and see how much longer we stay on. All right, but first off, thanks for filling this one up. I appreciate it. Now, hopefully we can pull some monsters out of here. Good luck, everybody. Quinn and Williams to 49. And we'll have these sleeved and top loaded by our shipping team before they go out. And there's Riley Ridley for the Bears. Draft day. Don't look, Stephen Wilkerson. Draft day autograph. That's Calvin's brother. That goes to Brian O, who got randomized the Bears. Ah. See, I feel like I feel like Juju Smith Schuster's double J is artsy enough to get away with it. To get away with a two letter thing without getting too much criticism. I don't know, Riley Ridley may have to rethink that one. Looks kinda cool, but maybe he's gotta get some there's gotta be some more flair there, Riley. Come on, you're a wide receiver, you can do it.
That's also numbered right there. And a one of one, Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson is a Ram. And that goes to Jeremy Menel. Jeremy. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. There's Joey Bosa. His brother's on the West Coast, too. There's Anthony Johnson. And we got Montez Sweat, a Mississippi State Bulldog, who I think is a Redskin. Is a Redskin. I'm learning, folks. I'm learning. And that'll be for Arturo, who got the Redskins in a team random. Yes, tomorrow I think Jason should go. I think actually Jason said last night, he was in the chat last night, he said that he'll probably go on around a little bit, a tiny bit later, four-ish LA time. There's Jalen Ramsey to 99. And Kenny Galladay. And then we've got Lights Camara action. Relic going to the Saints, Christopher Day. Steven Rushing, what's going on? <laughs> you almost got the last spot in a team, Randa, but didn't. And that ended up being Corey Carpenter who got the Colts. So Steven Rushing is saying, I'm pretty sure that means some sick Colts auto is going to pop out. Mike Trout, triple? Easy, easy for Mike Trout. Stand up triple for Mike Trout. What what uh, since we're doing a football break, what position do you think Mike Trout could have played in football? He's 6'2", 235. He's a big dude. 6'2", 235. Is that like linebacker size? Could he be a linebacker? Safety? Not a two. Well, he does have speed. He's got to lose some weight, maybe. Maybe if he trimmed down to, maybe he trimmed down a little bit. I could see, I could see safety. He'd be, he'd be fast. He's already fast at two thirty-five. Tight end, perhaps. Yeah, he's pretty tall, 6'2", 235. That's a big target. With that speed, man. And there's Miles Boykin, Silver Ink Autograph. Nice. Miles Boykin is a Raven. And that'll be for Brian O, who has the Purple Birds. Brian O thinks 6-2 feels a little short to him for tight end. Yeah, maybe. Defensive end? Yeah, 6'2", 235. I don't know if he'd be a hands-on-the-ground kind of defensive end, but I could see that. Byron Murphy, I believe he is a uh, Arizona football cardinal. I'm learning, I'm learning. Yes, he is, Cardinals. Ooh, all right, Johnny. I like what you're thinking there. Mike Trout does have a good arm. Quarterback? That's the easy choice, right? He'd be like 6'2", 235. That's a, that's, a, that's, that's, with that speed, it'd be hard to bring him down, too. There's Baker Mayfield. Oh, was that, was there a Brady that was numbered? I just breeze by that. To 49. 3 out of 49, Karen. Sorry. Yeah, our shipping crew will uh, 
sleeve and top load these before they get sorted and shipped out. There's Montez Sweat again for the Redskins, 349. Yeah, all right. Quarterback from Mike Trout. You can see that. You're welcome, Karen. Oh, and Karen, I know you asked a while ago. I don't think we're officially going to the National as 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 a, as Jaspies. We're moving into a new store. It's like triple the size of this store, maybe three thousand square feet. Um, so we're moving into that store in the next month or so. There's a manual hall. Um, so that's going to keep us busy, I'm afraid. But. We may try to pop up there. I may try to pop up there early in the week, maybe on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, around there, the early part of the National, to visit Rory's shop in, in Milwaukee. Maybe pop in one day for the early previews at the National or something like that. So just wanted to let you know, and everybody else. All right, that Juju Smith-Schuster, of course, goes to Michael Gallucci and his Steel Curtain Steelers. Uh, Mike Trout is a baseball player, Mikey, for the Los Angeles Angels. Rex is saying, you know, could have been a football player just for speed and moves Javier Baez. How tall is Javier Baez? He's six foot. Six foot 190, Javier Baez. He could be like, uh, I don't know, I could see him being maybe, uh, puts on a little weight, maybe running back. You can get him as, uh, six, six is kind of tall for a running back, but. Well, there have been some tall running backs before. Could be like a, not not like a bruising kind of running back, but I could see that. Maybe a slot receiver, something like that. You fly in Wednesday. Oh, it looks like we're just going to miss each other, Karen. Well, here's the good news: the new store is going to be is going to be so cool. I think that it'll become a. Uh, a destination, so you can maybe maybe uh, plan a little LA trip too. Wrap a little Jaspi visit in, in 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 between as well. There's Easton Stick, which is kind of funny because Easton makes baseball bats. They make sticks. Chargers with that one. So the draft day auto guys have their team there. Uh, that goes to Colton with the bolts. Yeah, I feel like I, I I see that Rex. I feel like uh, I feel like Javier Baez, you know, if he if he did, you know put on a little different kind of weight, not baseball weight, but football weight, which is a different kind of 190 pounds. I feel like he could be a speedy uh, receiver type, maybe a, a special teams type. That's for the New York Football Giants. DeAndre Baker, that'll be for Patrick K. There's Lawrence Taylor, and yes, occasionally there's points in here. That'll be randomized to one person in the break. If we, hopefully we don't, but if we get more points, um, we will randomize it as a lot. There's DeAndre Baker again. That's a one of one. I was like, that looks different. So Giants, Patrick Kay, who got randomized to New York football Giants, gets his DeAndre Baker one of one. I don't know. I mean, I know some of you may think that this is cheesy, but I do like the, the street art type font, the graffiti type font, you know, that cursive sort of look. I like the Instagram filter. I like the action in the photography. I think this looks cool. Patrick, all aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. 
And we've got Baker Mayfield. So DeAndre Baker to Baker Mayfield. Glenn Campbell with the Browns. You know something that's going to be great for Jazz? Jazz, we had an app where you can order breaks, put in suggestions. Well, we would never have suggestions. That'd be terrible. Imagine the suggestions we'd get. Um, no, that'd be cool. Uh, buy, sell, trade. Watch all in, the, all in one app. It's called YouTube. Oh, uh, no, you guys, can't, I guess you can't order on it. I think YouTube is, I saw something where, actually, Rex, that's a, this, is a, this is a good thing. This jogged my memory about an article that I read. YouTube had announced that they were going to try to do, uh, add new features for, um, for whatchamacallit, for, uh, for live streamers where they could buy product on, through the YouTube app without skipping a beat on the stream. Something like that. I think I read that somewhere. It would be interesting. Um, I guess late, I guess you know depending on how how things go you know later on down the line I think he'd, as especially as sort of you know streaming technology and streaming culture continues to grow I would like to see you know there could be a chance where we could get um, like we wouldn't live stream through YouTube we would just live stream through our just on our site you know, we use, so like we use Shopify, right? So maybe Shopify will develop something or like, or someone with a, can develop an app on Shopify. This is Dolphins, by the way, Preston Williams. Brino. Where they can develop an app where they could be, there could be a, um, you know, a, vi a video player on the site. You know how you can go to some sites and it'll be like this box in the corner. So let's say that stuff over there is the website, right? And there's that little box right here which plays a video of like, if you go to like CBS Sports and you're looking up like a team, it'll be like the fantasy rap update, you know? And there'll be like a little video that auto plays in the corner or like CNET does that. What if we had that on jazbeescasebreaks.com? So there'd be this little screen right here. You can still see, then this part's big enough where you can still kind of see the cards as you browse around the website and shop, All right? So then you don't skip a beat or you don't have like two different windows open or you're not using a phone to order and watching on an iPad or something like that, you know? I think that would be pretty cool. And then you can click like the full screen button and it pops back up into a full screen whenever you're done ordering or whatever. But I feel like that, that requires, although, I mean, what, what, what do we have at most? Like on average, 50, 60 viewers at a, at a given time, maybe a little bit more, 100 or so on a new release night. There's Cooper Cup for the Rams. So it would really just depend on, on how our own servers could handle that, or Shopify servers or whatever app they use, how they could handle that kind of bandwidth. But I'm sure like something like that, I'm waiting for that to happen someday. Or maybe we just have to do it ourselves. But Hey, there's Lenny. Old legend, Lenny Moore, Colts, 6 out of 25, Corey Carpenter. Right, eventually, it'll all just be in your head. That, that's the idea, Rex. So, people say technology grows exponentially, right? So, I'm, I would say, I would give it, I mean, how many years has it been since the, it's not been very long since iPhone 1 came out, right? iPhone 1 came out 10 years ago, 2008. Look how much changed in 10 years. A lot, like technology-wise. Look at your phones right now, you know? And look how primitive an iPhone 1 looks. At the time, it was the hottest thing in the world. There's Devin White to 349. So in 10 years, yeah. You can, you can probably implant a little uh, contact lens. You can glue it onto your eye. Devin White goes to the Buccaneers. Um, you can glue it to, paste it, paste that contact lens to your eye. I think there's a, if you watch some Mission Impossibles, that you can see that where they put the contact lens there and they, you can see like different things on your screen, like a heads up display. <laughs> I 
There you go. See, this is the kind of random stuff we talk about on these breaks, ladies and gentlemen. On on wax when we're recording these videos and off wax. This is Jaspies in a nutshell. Someday we'll get there. Video player on the site, though I think I think that that would be pretty cool. There's Lamar Jackson, and there's Alex Barnes, out of uh, 99. Uh, when am I gonna have the pug on the show? I don't know. Maybe in the new store. I think I'll have a. I think I'll have a bigger studio in the next store. That's also not in, that. Also is gonna be like. An enclosed studio, not in the middle of the store. Alex Barnes goes to the Titans, by the way. That'll be for Kevin O. So there, then I could probably bring the show, bring the pug into the show, and keep him inside the room so he doesn't run around causing havoc. Last time he was here, he found like he found a top loader, top loaders, a pack of top loaders under the table, and he was running around with it. Chewing on the corners. He's only like three, so he still he still has a lot of puppy energy. He hasn't he hasn't chilled out yet. I gotta wait till he chills out a little bit. Otherwise, it'd just be like, hey, pay attention to me. Why aren't you playing with me? Patriots. That goes to Karen. That's what the pug will do. You'll hear him whining in the background. Here's the ball. Throw me the ball. Why aren't you playing with me? Hey, here's the here's the toy. I brought you the toy. Make it go. Why aren't you making it go, Lamo? There's Icky Woods with the Icky Shuffle. That goes to the Bengals. That'll be for Brian O. If you, if you look up, we did a I think for uh, we did a preview video. Nick and I did a preview video for Impeccable. Football, I think. If you if you look that up, or if you go to the YouTube stream or your our YouTube channel, click video or click playlists, and there's like a preview playlist. If you click one of those, I think the pug is there. You can see the pug live. He was actually working on a uh, on a little block that he likes to chew on. One of those like salt milk blocks that they you see in the stores for dogs. He's working on one of those. There's Greedy Williams, a cardinal, I think. And he was con pretty con Browns, sorry, Browns. Uh, that goes to Glenn Campbell. And I scooped him up and had him on camera and he was he was just like, what am I doing up here? So you can see the pug in action there. Alright, next box. But yeah, hopefully the pug can play more often here in the new shop. There'll be some room for him. Right now, there's no room. The people would be tripping over him. He'd be in the way. Ryan O's saying, kid from Vanderbilt tossed a no-hitter in the Super Regional tonight. Wow. That's just that. Vanderbilt's just like a, uh, a baseball player factory. Especially for pitching. When the Reds were in town a little while ago, uh, he had 19 Ks. Um, when the Dodgers faced the Reds here in LA a while ago, Sonny Gray started. It was a Sonny Gray versus Walker Buehler start. Now they're, I don't think they ever crossed over in college. No, in fact, they didn't cross over in college. But they were both Vanderbilt products, and it was just kind of cool to see that even a slightly older, more like veteran player like Sonny Gray from Vanderbilt facing another kid from Vanderbilt and it's like five, seven years later, you know, they're still pumping out pitchers, so especially pitchers. There's little Jordan Humphrey who I'm pretty sure is a saint. That goes to Christopher Day. Oh, is it a golf factory too? Are they pr producing golfers?
There's Joe Mixon. The pitcher, the the kid who threw the no hitter was Kumar Rocker, and he's John Rocker's son. No. There'll be a rocker in baseball again. Did he get drafted? What year is he? Four out of 49, James Conner for Michael Gallucci and his Steelers. Uh, oh, he's not. <laughs> he's not John Rocker's son. Jersey and Otto, Steven Jackson, nice. 18 out of 25. That'll go to the Rams, old school Ram for Jeremy Mental. Oh, he's a freshman, so he probably wasn't drafted. Yes, yeah, Stephen Wilkerson, with a name like that, you got to throw a straight fire. Rex saying it's a shame pitchers don't last in today's world. You never seen the pitch a full game anymore. I know it's not a it's not a thing. I think it starts with like. There's Greedy Williams again for the Browns out of 149. Glenn Campbell. It starts from the elementary level. I, th I think, I think you know, like from little league through. By the time you're good enough to pitch like varsity in high school, and you maybe have a chance at like college or the pros or something like that. It's 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 velocity, velocity, velocity. You know, for most guys, that's what's going to get you noticed there. And so. You know, that's, I mean, that's what a lot of people say. You know, there's also all these, like, pitching training camps where, where you're, you're talking about, you know, throwing harder and throwing faster and all that sort of stuff. Um, and so maybe not as much on the art of pitching, you know, and I, I think that, like, I don't know. that It, it creates... A, a gen creates generations of pitchers who are not built to uh, you know they're not, they're not built to last or be durable like you don't see that anymore uh, yeah NASCAR have done, they don't have helmets but they do have um, or not that I've seen but they do have cards I think Panini this company here has the uh, has the rights to um, NASCAR so every once in a while, we'll, you'll see us do like National Treasures NASCAR or auto racing. It's pretty cool. They don't release a lot of that stuff. So the, if you get some of the, the bigger name drivers, you'll often, uh, they'll often sell pretty well in a secondary market. Uh, Mac Wilson is a brown. So a couple browns in a row for Glenn. Right, that too, Steve. Too many, too many kids being coached by idiots in Little League and like they're throwing curveballs and stuff like that, which is crazy. Like you shouldn't throw. I don't probably shouldn't throw a curveball until like late high school, <laughs> or at least with that much frequency. There's Mike Williams jersey. Is there now? I don't. I don't. I don't know this because I'm not. I'm an unmarried man with no kids, right? Um, if you want to be a little league coach. Is it is it just straight volunteer? I don't remember this from when I was a kid. Is it straight volunteering, or do you actually have to go through some like amount of training? Is there like a coaching like cert certification that you have to get? Is it just straight volunteer? Says Brian. No training, Stephen Wilkerson confirmed. Seconds. But just volunteers. No training. Why doesn't... See, I feel like... You know what they do in soccer? In all the... Like, in the English Premier League and the soccer leagues? Like, you have to get coaching badges, certificates. Like, to even coach at the at a youth level. You know? Um, youth level, and then and then to coach other levels, you have to get another set of badges and another set of badges. You have to get all this coaching certification to even coach... A, a little league team, let alone, or a, like a, a a child's soccer team, let alone something else. So there's like this this administrative structure there. 
Oh, that, um, Marcus Peters, of course, goes to the Rams. That'll be for Jeremy Mendel. That's crazy. I, f I feel like Major League Baseball should... I don't know. There's Miles Sanders. Have more... I think he's a eagle. Miles Sanders. He is. Nice. Should have more, more I think... Not regulations, but... I don't know. At least some sort of at least some sort of certificate or something like that. Even if it's like a a, a sort of a BS hour long class where you can just kind of, kind of do the basics and stuff. Don't have your kids throw curveballs. <laughs> but then at the high school level too, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this where there's all these like sort of velocity camps, right? Where, where, where kids can go and just spend all this money on, I don't know, don't get me started on like youth sports. And I'm not even a, a father yet, right? But like, I feel like there's just so much ways kids can get twisted in youth sports, it's just ridiculous. Or how much money that you can, parents can get scammed for. Or how expensive it costs just to just to have your kid be on a travel team. If you're poor, you can't spend money to get your kid on a travel team, pay for all that stuff. So there's Aaron Donald, two seventy five. Alex Barnes. Well Rex is saying what, you don't need to take a class course to be a parent? Well, that's that's different. There's no rules in parenting. You know what I mean? But there are rules in baseball. And there are, you know, decades of, of, of development that has, that has happened in baseball and what can injure your child and what can't. Titans for Alex Barnes. You know what I mean? So, like, so that's different. There's AJ Green. There's Matt Stafford to 25. 72 out of 99. Dante Pettis. Stephen Wilkins says, I have a degree and I'm a high school level coach. Camps are 90% of the time. A full out scam, right. If you're good enough, they'll find exactly. The camps are a scam. Like there's 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 all the, the you so you know about all the velocity camps that they do where they're like throwing like, you know five pound baseballs or something crazy like that just to develop that kind of velocity and, and all that sort of stuff and then there's like the hitting experts that you send your kid to that you know go to hitting camp and some hitting guru will all that sort of stuff i don't know if you guys remember uh you guys remember jerry harrison jr baseball player he's got a family in baseball too there's nick chubb eight out of ten for the browns glenn nice break for the browns and um, and he was and he was saying he sees his kids in uh, he sees his kids in little league and he says it drives him crazy and he doesn't want to be that guy so he doesn't really say anything because you know he doesn't have time to coach the team or something he does a lot of network TV for the Dodgers network and he's saying it's crazy because he sees like actually sees little league coaches maybe not on his son's team but other coaches talking about launch angle and talking about how to drop the back shoulder. And uppercut everything because that's what they think launch angle is. It's insane. <laughs> and it's just all just like bad hitting mechanics. And people, and, and launch angle I think always gets misinterpreted as you're just always uppercutting the ball or something like that. Which is not necessarily the case. But that's what it sounds like. There's Josh Jacobs from my Raiders. Very excited about him. Are the new look Raiders? So it's just crazy. And no one's preparing the in the off season like they should. Yeah, Stephen Wilkinson saying, yeah, it does seem like there's a lot more injuries. <laughs> and Stephen Wilkinson is is saying there's the. Uh, I like how you put that. No, that's that that that's a. I think that's a good way to put it. There, there's a sissification of the sport. 
I'm glad you use more family-friendly language. Um, don't shoot the messenger, he says, but... Yeah, I mean... Also, I saw Rex earlier. It's hard to compare pitchers nowadays to, like, Nolan Ryan and, and, and Randy Johnson. I think those guys are... Not only were they good, but they were, like... They were just like genetic. They, they were their arms were touched by God Himself, and you know they turned into who they are. They were just specially gifted. So it's hard to compare just unique genetic specimens like those guys, you know. But but I mean, like take like the the average number, the average pitcher in the '80s and '90s, right? And just look at how many like complete games there are and and whatnot. I. Why aren't there more pitchers like that? <laughs> Colts with that one. That would be Corey Carpenter with the Colts. Draft day. Oh, that's right. These draft day autos have their logos on them. Right. Scherzer is probably the closest it comes to those guys. Verlander, maybe. Verlander is a horse, too. There's Mitch Trubisky. But I think, I, I think like, the... Uh, I think, like, just the mechanics of, of, of how kids are growing up learning pitching, too, I think that's also what leads to, like, future injuries. There's Mitch Trubisky for the Bears. Here's another thing that I, that I think, uh, you know, it's hard to point, you know, at one thing and say that's the reason why blah, blah, blah. But I think um, there's too much year-round sports. Back then, A.J. Green would play football in the fall, baseball in the spring, you know, or bat, whatever the case may be, right? But now, this is the same with basketball injuries too. You see this a lot in hoops. When you're playing basketball year round, you're using the same muscles and the same movements and the same joints and ligaments year round. And that wears it down. There's not enough cross training anymore. There's Zach Allen. I think that's another big thing too. When baseball becomes like a year long sport, right? There's Zach Allen. He's for the Cardinals. That goes to Kevin O. So you're using the same motions all the time, and there's just wear. There's just natural wear and tear that happens. You li I would um, Clay Thompson's dad, Michael Thompson, former Laker. There's Gary Jennings Jr. is uh, does Lakers radio, he color commentary for Lakers radio, right? And he's also on the on ESPN LA here, the ESPN affiliate here. And this is something that he says all the time too. He says, he says when I was, he's like, you know, the the host would ask him, hey, you, Michael, you never, Michael Thompson, you never got injured. Like you were playing, you played thirty minutes a night, you know, eighty-one games a year, blah 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 blah. How come, how come everyone else is talking about load management, all that sort of stuff, and um, and load management and whatnot. So Michael Thompson says, guess, guess what? When when I started the when I st I only started training for basketball maybe a week before um, a week before the preseason even started, you know what I mean? He's like once the season ended, I never picked up a basketball until maybe a week before preseason when I was supposed to report to camp. He said over the summer he played he I played tennis. He's like I play you know I'd run I'd swim I'd go scuba diving, I, I, I'd keep active, he'd keep fit throughout the season, you know. Um, but he was activating different muscles and, and whatnot. And he wouldn't even, he's like, I didn't even touch a basketball all summer long. He's just like, now, he's like, when Clay was growing up, it was just like, you played basketball in the fall, played basketball in the spring, you had summer league basketball, 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 basketball. You're, you're, you're going like, you know, Mamba method where you're doing like a thousand jumpers a day, blah, blah, blah. And guess what? You know, you burn out those muscles that you, those basketball muscles, and you're not strengthening other parts. You know, and because you don't strengthen other parts of your body, what happens is you get an injury, your body overcompensates, you injure another part of your body, and then all of a sudden you're injury prone. Yeah, Stephen Wilkins saying, I've always hated spring baseball, then fall baseball, then right back to the other. Right, you're wearing down all the elbows, rotator cuff stuff. You, you, you screw everything up. And I honestly think 
you know, everyone can point to a lot of other things too. Yes, maybe the game's being played harder, blah, 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 all that other stuff. But I think the over-specialization that happens, you know, high school, like junior high school kids with swing coaches and pitching coaches and velocity coaches, baseball year round and, and, and all that sort of stuff. There's Debo Samuel for the Niners, silver ink autograph. You get all that, you wear out, you wear out those body parts. You know, I mean, nowadays it almost seems like it, it almost seems like for most pitchers, like Tommy John surgery is like is like yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Eventually, you'll do it, and then you'll come back. <laughs> like now that's like terrifying. Before it was just like everyone wanted to avoid any kind of surgery as much as possible, but now it's just so common. Everyone's just like, there's Benny Snell Jr. 349. Something few will agree with. Dare steroids make baseball so much more fun? Nick Jaspi often says that his favorite baseball era was, there's Benny Snell Jr. Steelers, was uh, Sammy Sosa, Mark McGuire. But here's what it is. I, I think, yeah, it, it, that it is a different, we're almost done with this break, so that's a different discussion for a different time, Stephen. But I think... There's Travion Williams, three out of five. Let's, I'll discuss the point after this train whistle. Travion Williams, where do you go? Texas A&M and Aggie. Travion Williams is a bangle. That goes to Brian O. Brian, that's right, I am on my soapbox. Three out of five. And all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo! There he is. I guess my point on steroids, you know, yes, I don't, I don't, I want the sport to be clean. It's not good to, to have all that stuff. But there, were there only three hits in there, or did I move this over? Anyway, um, it doesn't make. Everyone knows this, right? It doesn't make you like I can't take steroids and suddenly, and suddenly hit three hundred at Dodger Stadium, right? That's not gonna happen. I just, I have naturally, genetically do not have the hand-eye coordination and the and the, uh, the talent to do that, you know? But I think the biggest thing was, and I think people started figuring this out when they were like, wait, pitchers are taking steroids? It's recovery, right? It just keeps you healthier. Or it lets you bounce back faster, you know? So if you're, if you're, Mid 30s, early 30s, mid 30s, healthy, 100% healthy Mark McGuire, and you have elite hand eye coordination and natural power in your bat, and you're getting bigger and stronger and recovering faster. Yeah, you're going to hit 70 home runs a year. There's DK Metcalf for the Seahawks. Nice one. Could have a big season. Johnny with that big rookie season, which is kind of rare for a rookie wide receiver, but Russell Wilson has no one else to throw to. Well, and that's that's where, and I don't know enough about this, Stephen K is piping and saying, hey, I don't think steroids are any different from supplements they have nowadays. Right. Medically, I just don't know enough, but I wonder how different it really is, how arbitrary it really is, you know? I would imagine there's some steroids that are like the the classic, you know, scary story of it'll 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 shrink your private parts and it'll it'll turn you this it'll get you angry that you get a lot of zits and head will get bigger and I'm sure there's the bad steroids but I'm sure there are performance enhancing stuff at some point where I think Benny Snell is a stealer he is a stealer Michael Gluge with own but I'm sure that you can probably get enough. Enough supplements for you to do that? No, Stephen Wilkinson saying no. All right. But yeah, I mean, whatever steroid is, it, it recovers your joints faster than you normally would. So healthy players means look at the Warriors right now. Imagine if uh, KD was popping some steroids, <laughs> inject some human HGH into his calf, into his bum calf. Clay Thompson injects his hamstring, you know, with some. 
oxygenated red, oxygenated blood and HGH and horse placenta and all that sort of stuff and whatever crazy thing they do, you know, that's not legal here. And then see how the Raptors do with the healthy Warriors. Travion Williams is a bangle. I had that last time. I forgot about that. That's another one for uh, Brian O. Baker Mayfield. It's Alvin Kamara, 86 out of 99. Lights Kamara action going to the Saints. Christopher Day. What up, Jeremy? Jeremy S. is in the house. There's a great story about Reels from Real Sports about youth sports. Wait, uh, are you talking about Real Sports with Brian Gumble on HBO? About how Holland or Norway producing all these super athletes. I mean, that'd be that'd be pretty interesting to see. It's crazy. I mean. I don't know. At the end of the day, I think over-specialization for athletes, I think, could, could cause a lot of injuries. you got to cross-train more. Cross-train your kids. That's my soapbox statement. Cross-train your kids. All right, I'll check that out, Jeremy. That sounds cool. I'll, I'll dig that up on the, on, the, on the YouTube. But, I mean, from a, from a selfish perspective, it's important to me because... Listen, look how much money this entire industry spends on on teenage kids being professional athletes, right? There's a whole cottage industry for that. So it's in, in all of our best interest to make sure that your future pro athlete children, ladies and gentlemen, of you guys may have some, you know, are getting up there and not being injured within the first few years of their career. There's Raymond Jones to ten. And Nikhil Harry for the Patriots. 84 out of 199. Draymond Jones, 6 out of 10, goes to the Broncos. That'll be for Stephen K. Out of 275. There's Cleland Farrell for my Raiders. At 349. I have high hopes for him. Arturo with my Raiders. There's James Conner. And there's Julian Love, 12 out of 99. Julian Love goes to the New York Football Giants. That goes to Patrick K. And last one here is Alvin Kamara to 25. This break ran long. We were just... We were just jibber jabbering. Sorry, folks. This break ran really long, but hey, this is what we do. We hang out, we chat. We weren't in a rush. Nothing else is selling out, right? We we weren't in a rush. All right, thanks everybody. That's the break. Pick your team for. I'm also definitely running out of steam today, ladies and gentlemen. All right, uh, let's get the randomizer set up. Yeah, as always, Stephen Wilkerson, oh, it's always good to chat. Well, we, we like that. We like talking. Um, all right, so everyone has a chance at those little points there. I think that took the place of a hit, unfortunately. But uh, let's see who gets it. Oh, this break should have been like 20 minutes shorter. Five out of two, five and two, seven times. Name on top gets it. One, two, three, four, five. Six and seven, then final time. After seven times, Kevin O, there you go. An extra 250 points coming your way. 
And there you have it, folks. Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye.